In this lesson, we'll learn how to configure the cutting conditions. The FC2250 has eight cutting conditions that are presets, each configured for a specific type of material or type of cutting. Each condition has four main settings, force, speed, quality, which is another word for acceleration, and offset, which is the blade type. There are other settings, such as thick, that can be assigned to conditions as well. As mentioned, each condition can be configured to specific types of material or a specific type of cutting. For instance, condition 1 can be configured for plotting with a pen, whereas condition 2 can be configured for sandblast. Condition 3 could be configured for chipboard, and so on. This will be covered later in this lesson, but each condition is either assigned to tool holder 1 or tool holder 2. Once the conditions are configured, they can be easily switched either manually from the control panel or by the software application. Within the software, individual objects in a design can be assigned to different conditions. For instance, a package design with both creasing and cutting could have the lines for creasing assigned to the condition configured for creasing and have the lines for cutting assigned to a cutting condition. So instead of switching the tool head when an operation is completed, it's done automatically. Looking at the display screen on the control panel will show the current condition. Right now, it's condition 1. We'll show how to change to different conditions in a moment. Next is the tool number. This indicates the tool holder that this condition is assigned to. In this case, it shows that this condition is assigned to tool holder 1. This is your force value. Notice that there are two force values. Simply put, the first value is the force when the tool head is moving in the X direction or side to side. The second value is the force when cutting in the Y direction or up and down. The reason for two different values is that certain materials require a different force in one direction but not in the other. Speed refers to the traveling speed of the tool head in centimeters per second. This condition has the speed value of 30 centimeters per second, which is approximately 12 inches per second. This value can be increased up to 40 centimeters per second. Offset is the blade type. The offset is how much shift distance or offset that it has to travel to obtain sharp corners. Instead of entering a value, the blade type that is being used can be chosen. If you are unsure of the blade type, this can be easily obtained by looking at the package or container that the blade came in. The last value, quality, is the acceleration of the movement around the corners. Take note that the higher the number, the lower the quality. As a rule, the thinner the material, the higher this number can be set. To configure the current condition settings, press the Condition button. The function keys are then used to choose the value to change, whether it be force, speed, quality, or offset. The arrow key then allows you to change those values. A blinking cursor indicates the setting can be adjusted, which will always come up next to the force value. This is because in most cases, the force is usually the first to be adjusted. To adjust the value, in this case the force, press the up or down arrow keys. Remember, we are only adjusting the X direction value. To change the Y direction value, simply press a side arrow key, and then once again press the up or down arrow key to change the Y direction value. To change the other values, such as speed, press the function key associated to that value. In this case, pressing the F2 key will place the blinking cursor next to the speed value. The value can then be adjusted by pressing the up or down arrow keys. Offset works a little differently. Recall that offset is the blade type being used with this condition. Instead of using the up or down arrow keys, the side keys can be used to loop through the different blade types. Once again, the blade type can be obtained from the package label the blade came in. The value next to the offset blade type is for adjusting the offset. To change the quality, press the F4 key. 
and then use the up or down arrow keys to adjust that value as well. Once the values are adjusted, press the Enter key to assign the values to this condition, in this case, condition 1. Once the condition is configured, it can be tested by pressing the Test button on the control panel. The display screen prompts you with four options. We'll concern ourselves with just two of them, Test 1 and Test 2. Test 1 cuts a square and a triangle pattern. Test 2 will cut the same square and triangle pattern three times. The middle pattern is cut with the current force. The pattern on the left is cut with the current force minus 1. For instance, if the force is set to the value of 17, then the first pattern is cut with a force value of 16. The pattern on the right is cut with a force plus 1. Thus, if the current force is 17, this pattern is cut with the force of 18. These three patterns provide another way to more accurately determine the force value. Once the pattern or patterns are cut, for materials with a backing such as in the case of self-adhesive vinyl, first remove the square. As it is being removed, it should leave the triangle. When cutting a test pattern on materials that are to be cut through, such as in the case of thicker materials, the pattern should just pop out leaving clean edges. When test cutting thicker materials, don't concern yourself with leaving the triangle. As long as the square pops out easily, then the cutting force is set. If it doesn't pull out easily, increase the force by one or two. Once you understand how to adjust a condition, the next step is to configure the other conditions. Let's switch to a different condition. To do this, the cutter has to be out of the condition editing mode. When the cutter shows ready, the condition can be switched. Switch to another condition by using the function keys. Notice that there are eight conditions but only four function keys. By pressing the same function key repeatedly, this will toggle between the lower condition number and a higher condition number. For instance, if we press F1 once, the cutter switches to condition 1. If F1 is pressed again, it will toggle to condition 5. When pressed again, it switches back to condition 1. This is how the other function keys work as well. F2 toggles between condition 2 and condition 6. F3 toggles between condition 3 and condition 7. F4 toggles between condition 4 and condition 8. When switching to a condition that is assigned to a different tool holder, the tool head may shift. The reason for this is, as mentioned earlier, each condition is assigned to either tool holder 1 or tool holder 2. In fact, when looking at the condition on the display screen, the tool holder can be seen by the number next to it. To reassign a different tool holder number, press pause, next twice, F2 for tool condition, and then press F2 again for tool number. In this case, the top row are the eight conditions. The bottom row indicate what tool holder is assigned to each condition. To reassign a tool holder to a condition, press a side arrow key until it is under the condition number that's to be adjusted. Then simply press the up or down arrow key to set it to either tool holder one or two. Press enter to accept the changes and then press pause to place it in ready mode. Configuring conditions may seem tedious at first, but in the long run it will save you production time. When cutting thicker material, the thick mode can be useful. Recall that the thick option is the method of cutting where the cutting blade is lifted on each corner. It can also add an overcut to those corners. This results in cleaner, sharper corners. To enable the thick mode, Press pause, press next twice, press F2 for tool condition, and then F1 for thick. Press F1 for thick number. This will display a menu screen with a row of eight numbers representing the eight conditions. The bottom row indicates whether thick is enabled or not for each condition. The side arrow keys are used to move the cursor to the desired condition where we want the thick mode enabled. 
Then press up or down arrow keys to enable or disable the mode. When enabled, a check mark will appear under the condition. Keep in mind that once thick is set for a specific condition, then every time any changes are made to that condition, the cutter will allow the thick mode options to be adjusted if need be. There are different parameters for the thick mode. First there are two modes, mode 1 and mode 2. When thick is enabled, it will overcut on the corners. This helps in providing a sharp corner. Mode 1 will overcut on each corner, whereas mode 2 overcuts on the first and last point instead of each corner. Mode 1 is best used for supple materials such as sandblast rubber. For thin materials, mode 2 can be used since overcutting is not necessary.